But welcome to Feature Friday. And if you are new to class, this is a class that we have every Friday from 12 to 1230. And we feature new brands to the giant company, new brands to us, and dive a little bit deeper into the brand story and the product lineup. So I'm excited to chat with you today about our feature of the week, and that is Core Power. And go ahead and drop in chat if you have tried Core Power before. Um, if you did, what flavor did you have? You know, what did you like about it? So go ahead and drop that in chat while I go ahead and share my screen here. All right, and let me pull chat back up here. All right, so I'm seeing a lot of have not tried it, haven't heard of it. Um, you guys are really fast in chat. It keeps going up, going up. I tried it, but I don't remember the flavor. I like the high protein. My son loves the chocolate. I see another. I tried the chocolate once and it was really good. Awesome. All right. So is it like fair life? Great question. So let's go ahead and dive in. But it looks like a majority of you have not tried it. So um, I always find that really exciting because then we get to introduce you to maybe something new that you can incorporate into your kind of everyday, your your lifestyle, into your shopping trips. Um, you know, I even as a dietitian, who I'm a retail dietitian, I'm in the store, I'm working with products all the time. I'm always surprised by just things that I've never seen before um, as you kind of spend that time walking the aisles. So um, just like you, I think it's always really fun to find new products to just kind of try something a little bit different and, and maybe something that we weren't aware of. So Core Power, if you are not familiar, um, you can see it is fueled by Fairlife Protein. So yes, this is made with Fairlife Milk. So um, a lot of you are probably very familiar with Fairlife Milk, but if you're not, we'll dive into that a little bit deeper as well. Um, but at kind of its core, Core Power is a post-workout shake that's designed for fitness enthusiasts looking for a high quality protein and something that has a great taste as well. So you can see, um, if you jump on their website, a lot about recovery, post-workout, high quality protein to help build up that muscle. Um, this is a shelf-stable product. So if you are looking for it in the stores, you're actually going to find this in the center aisles. So um, I think immediately I was like, oh, it's probably over by the milk. It is not. This is going to be in the center aisles um, where a lot of other those performance drinks are. So in my store, um, it was aisle four where um, the soda is. And then as you get towards the end of the aisle, there's some of those different performance drinks like Propel and Gatorade and so on that are sold individually. And that's where you'll find this core power drink. So it is sold shelf stable. Um, however, since it is milk, once you open it, you do need to refrigerate it. But I do kind of love that it is shelf stable. So if you are going to the gym or if you're traveling, you don't have to worry about having it refrigerated if it's unopened and just throw it in your bag. It makes for a great grab and go. So like I mentioned, this is made kind of the core ingredient is fair life milk. So I thought it was important for us to actually step back even a little bit to talk about like what is fair life? What's fair life milk all about? What's that process look like? So Core Power is made with 100% real, lactose-free, ultra-filtered milk from Fairlife. And so at kind of its core belief, Fairlife believes that they can always make the world better. And so Fairlife began um, a little over 10 years ago, back in 2012, with the belief that milk and its natural health benefits can be used to create great tasting products that nourish consumers and fit into their modern lifestyles. Milk naturally contains, so just as it is from the cow, naturally contains 13 essential vitamins and minerals. So it definitely packs a punch of nutrition um, and also is a great source of protein. So Fairlife does specialize in dairy-based products um, to give everyone the nutrition they need. Um, they know our products are only a piece of a much larger purchase. 
purpose. <laughs> so today their vision is to extend far beyond the bottle by harnessing the power of curiosity and innovation. They have a lot of really cool new products out um, and to strive for more delicious dairy. And so looking at the product lineup for Fairlife, we see of course Core Power, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. Um, but of course Fairlife does have that milk um, that you can purchase on its own. And then they also do have a fair life nutrition plan that has some uh, nutrition shakes as well. So um, like I mentioned, we'll be focusing on core power today, which is a large piece of that is fair life. So I wanted to kind of start with that. And I think it's important to know why fair life is different and how it's different. So I think maybe when you hear that it has a ton more protein and it has less sugar, like what are they doing to it? Why, how is it getting to that nutrition profile? So it really kind of starts with their ultra filtration process. So they start out with high quality milk. They're working with dairy farmers um, that meet their high standards. And then they are ensuring a quick chill on their milk. So fresh milk tastes better. It's a fact. It's the reason that they take great care of their milk and quick chill it down to 37 degrees, keeping it cool all the way into your local store. Um, and that's why they believe their milk does taste so fresh. And then there's this ultra filtration process, process, which is kind of the core of it all. So you see here that they have their milk flowing through what they call their special soft filters to concentrate the protein and calcium and filter out most of the sugar. So just through this ultra filtration process, um, they're able to take milk as it comes out of the cow, essentially, and concentrate that protein, calcium, and reduce the amount of natural sugar that's found in the milk because they know their consumers are maybe looking for more of those things. So when you think about um, when I think about this, I also kind of think about Greek yogurt. So um, traditional yogurt has, you know, four to six grams protein. Greek yogurt has 12 to 14 grams protein, if not more. And that's just because of the way that it's processed. So different ways of um, that processing can increase that protein. And then we see um, also help reduce that sugar and calcium. So um, there's not any kind of thing added. It's just the way that they filter this milk. And so then the final product, um, every bottle of Fairlife is as delicious as it, can, as it can be while providing the nutrients you need. So, um, you know, we don't lose by that ultra filtration. We're not losing any calcium. They're actually making it more concentrated. And so you get this really nutrient dense milk. Um, and that's also lactose free. I think that's an important thing here too. So, if you are a milk drinker, um, or maybe you're not a milk drinker because you're lactose intolerant, um, ultra filtration um, and the kind of the fair life process, and even what we see through Core Power does make this a lactose free product. So it is um, safe for those to consume that are lactose intolerant. Um, I think another call out that they make is that the ratio of whey to casein. That's, that's the protein that's naturally found in milk um, is ideal for recovery. And so that's probably for, you know, for many years now, even, you know, as a dietitian um, and going to conferences, you hear a lot about chocolate milk being one of the greatest recovery drinks. Um, and that's because milk has that ideal recovery um, kind of nutrition profile. So what Core Power has done is kind of take took that and really made it even better. And so um, Fairlife has that patented filtration process that can deliver high protein levels per ounce, um, which is really ideal for sports recovery. So looking at core power and the benefits of recovery with it. Um, so what does it really do? Why is it important when we think about um, fitness and workout recovery? And so it does help maximize recovery. So it fights post-workout fatigue with that high quality protein. And um, you can kind of see if you remember back to one of the first slides, you can see that that protein number, if you remember, is 26 grams is um, their, their traditional core power is 26 grams of protein. And we'll dive a little bit deeper into that, but a lot of protein in this 14 ounce drink. 
And we know that recovery starts with protein. So protein is really important post-workout and really just overall for us all to get that protein in um, throughout the day. And specifically for post-workout, it helps to repair and rebuild muscle to help power on to your next workout. So as we work out, as we're um, you know, lifting weights or doing activity, we're breaking down muscle. And so we need that protein post-workout to help build that back up. Now we get a lot of questions around what's the ideal timing. So after a workout, after being active, how soon should I be consuming a post-workout fuel? And the ideal timing is typically within 60 minutes post-workout. So, you know, you finish your workout at 10 a.m. By 11 a.m., you want to be fueling yourself with that good dose of protein. And I think a really great call out here too, we see here and we've talked about, this is fueled by Fairlife milk um, with the ability to create that high quality dense protein. There's no added protein powders here. And we'll go into the ingredient list so you guys can see that, but they're not adding a pea protein or an additional um, milk protein. This is all coming, all this protein that you see in these drinks is coming directly from the Fair Life milk, which um, is, is a huge call out because a lot of these, um, you know, fitness drinks and things like that, we see protein powders added. And while that's not a bad thing, some people don't like the flavor of them. And so I think when you, you find when you consume them, it tastes like milk because it is milk. So the other call out here is the sugar content can maybe compared to, to other um, fitness drinks that you're maybe used to consuming or are aware of. So Core Power found that consumers were looking for lower sugar options when it came to recovery beverages. And so you'll see here uh, the Core Power sugar compared to other beverages that you may be consuming. So um, this is per 14 ounces, which is the, the size of the container. So the um, this is one serving size. And you'll see that um, kind of at its highest, there's between seven to eight grams of total sugar, where um, comparing that maybe to milk itself. Now, considering that the sugar found in milk is naturally occurring, right? It's lactose naturally occurring, nothing wrong with that, but it does have 20 grams of natural sugar. Now, a big comparison here is I think between the sports and energy drinks, which we know do not contain um, for the most part, natural sugar. This is all added sugar, which we need to be more mindful of in our diet. And so sports drinks, energy drinks, can really pack a punch of added sugar, um, which we know is contributes to the calories in some of these drinks as well. So um, big differentiator between um, the sugar, but that doesn't mean it's not sweet. So they do use some sweeteners, which I'll show you here in a second, to sweeten the drink to give you that great taste that you're looking for. So looking at Core Power, and if you're to go into your Giant or Martin store, you'll see that there's two different options. There's Core Power, I'm going to call it traditional, like traditional core power, and then there's core power elite. You can see the big differentiator here is the protein. Your traditional core power has 26 grams of protein per bottle, um, which is 14 ounces, and your core power elite has 42 grams of protein. Again, no powders added. This is just coming from Fairlife Milk itself. Um, the sugar, not too much different, somewhere between five to six with the traditional and then seven to eight with the elite and then a little bit of a difference in the calories as well. But let's go ahead and dive into uh, the actual drink itself and look at the ingredients and the nutrition. You can see the flavors here. So they have three different flavors in both varieties, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry banana, which are all very delicious flavors. <laughs> and so let's go ahead and dive into our Core Power Vanilla. So again, this is kind of that traditional, original Core Power, 26 grams of protein. Um, looking over here at the nutrition information, um, the serving size is 14 ounces, so it's, it's the whole bottle. Uh, you can see it's 170 calories with four and a half grams of fat. 
um, three grams of saturated fat. So we know milk is a natural source of saturated fat, um, still only at 15% of the daily value. So 15% of you should have in a day. Um, so still fits within uh, a healthy diet. And um, like we said, most of that's probably coming from that milk itself. They're not using skim milk or non-fat milk. They're using low fat milk. And that's probably why we see that come through there. You'll see the sodium is 260 milligrams. Total carbs are six. So it's pretty pretty low carb option. Um, one gram of fiber. So is made from milk. Milk really naturally doesn't have much fiber to it. And so um, we're not going to see that number be really high, um, which is what, what, we, what we would expect, right? They're not adding anything to it to, to boost that number up. Total sugars are five. So we saw the core power in the beginning, I think it's between five to six grams of total sugar. And that's primarily coming from the milk itself as well. So remember that milk naturally has sugar, lactose, and while it is significantly reduced here, um, we still do have a little bit of that natural sugar. And so um, one eight ounce glass of milk has about 12 grams of natural sugar. So it's it's well below half of what it would be in a traditional um, glass of milk. And then you'll see again, the big call out here is 26 grams of protein. So that's equivalent to consuming about four ounces of meat. So you think about a four ounce piece of chicken, you know, about the size of a deck of cards or your palm of your hand, um, that's about three ounces. So just slightly more than that. Um, that's what the equivalent is, 26 grams of protein here. So it really is a good dose of protein um, and specifically complete protein. Now, I wanted to walk through the ingredients. So um, I know if you're not familiar with the reading ingredient list, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. So I wanted to dive in here for this first one and kind of explain. And then as you see, as we walk through the different flavors, the ingredients at its core really doesn't change. Um, you might see some different flavor profiles, like the next one, we'll see cocoa because it is chocolate. But at its core, the ingredients are pretty much the same across the board. So you'll see starts out with that filtered low fat grade A milk. So that is the core of what this drink is. It is milk based. Then less than 1% of the additional ingredients here. So we see some natural flavors, monk fruit, which we know is a natural sweetener, comes from the monk fruit plant. Um, and some of you are probably really familiar with that monk fruit and stevia. Um, leaf extract, which is next, are very common natural sweeteners that a lot of people really love. Next up is carrageenan, which if you're not familiar with that, that's a very commonly used food additive. And this is derived from red seaweed. Um, it's commonly used as a thickener. So it's going to help thicken this product up um, and make it kind of like a nice milkshake consistency. Cellulose gel and cellulose gum is also a natural additive. So um, provides a very similar effect um, in that thickening and then also helps provide this nice creaminess, which milk has a lot of that creaminess itself, but that's also going to help provide that additional creaminess in this drink. Ace, ace sulfame potassium, or you might have seen it on a food label before as ace sulfone K, same thing. Um, this is going to be a artificial sweetener. So that's all it is, it's a sweetener um, that we are seeing used here. It's non-caloric, so um, we're not seeing that contributing to any calories. And that's why we see them using natural sweeteners and artificial sweeteners here in combination. Um, and I think you probably have heard me say this before if you've been with me for a while. Uh, I personally love when there's a nice balance of different sweeteners versus just one. Um, I think that just kind of hits on a better sweetener profile um, when we start using some of the natural and artificial sweeteners. Sometimes if you use just one, it's like really profound in flavor and you can taste it versus when there's a couple different ones used it, I feel like it has a little bit better of a balance in flavor profile. So um, I actually really do like when there is that disbursement. Um, and then also you'll see that there is sucralose, which um, you guys are probably really familiar with. Think yellow packet, Splenda, that is sucralose. And so they're using this here as a sweetener as well. Again, this is less than 1% of the ingredients. And so then lastly, we have lactase enzymes. So remember me mentioning in the beginning, this is 100% lactose free. So if you are lactose, lactose intolerant, you can consume this. And 
a large amount of that lactose is um, I don't know, sloughed off in the filtration process. So we see a lot of that um, coming out of the filtration process. We, a lot of that lactose is um, gone through that. Um, however, if there is any leftover lactose, what they do is add a lactase enzyme to this. Um, this is kind of similar to if you're lactose intolerant and took that lactase pill um, or lactate pill rather. That is going to help break that lactose bond down into um, two smaller molecules, glucose glucose and galactose. Let's not get into the, the nitty gritty of it, but essentially what that does is when it breaks that lactose up um, into two different smaller molecules, it lets it be absorbed a lot easier for people that have lactose intolerance, making it 100% um, lactose free. So that's why we see that lactase enzyme there just helps you absorb that lactose. And then we see vitamin A and vitamin D3 here added as well. Um, down, Skipping down to the bottom, which I skipped over. You can see this has 50% of your daily value for calcium and calcium and vitamin D specifically are, you know, are something that people tend to be missing out on in their diet. So a great dose of calcium for sure. Um, more than what traditional milk has. And then also we get that potassium here too at 15% of your daily value. We know that potassium can help with heart health. So, um, seeing that here, um, is, is really important too. And that's 15% of what you need in a whole day. So a, a good dose there as well. So I hope that helps kind of clear up some of the ingredients, some of the nutrition. So I wanted to go in a little bit more depth with this one um, so that when we move to the different flavors, you kind of can see um, as we move here to the core power chocolate, the ingredients are pretty much the same. Um, what we see different here is that they have the alkalized cocoa powder. That's how we're getting that chocolate flavor. But the core of the milk as its first ingredient, which means that it's present the most, that's what we are consuming the most of. Um, and then the less than 1% ingredients are pretty much the same across the board. Um, and that's why we see the nutrition facts be pretty much the same across the board. So still 170 calories, still going to be four and a half grams of fat. Um, 260 milligrams of sodium, still that 26 grams of protein, um, a little bit more carbs here, eight grams, again, very neg negligible on the vanilla with six. So um, still no added sugar. We're seeing that kind of distributed across um, the monk fruit, the stevia, and um, acylphone potassium and the sucralose. So again, pretty much at, I keep using the word core. I don't know if that's just um, mentally there for me now because of core power, but at its core, it's pretty much the same ingredients across the board for this. Um, just really, I think it depends on what flavor you're really looking for. And I know a lot of people mentioned that they really loved the chocolate, which um, I once when I'm done going through the deck, I'll show you guys what they look like and, and talk a little bit more about the flavor. And I'm running out of time. So let me let me keep going here. Um, so then we have the Elite, which I wanted to show you as well. Again, the ingredients aren't changing too much here. We still have that milk as the core. Um, we just have a lot more protein here. Um, so a little bit, probably more of that filtration happening to get to that 42 grams of protein. But again, there's still nothing added. There's no added protein powders here. Milk is providing all of that protein. So 42 grams of protein, which is equivalent to about six ounces of meat. So really a large dose of protein here. And this is, I think, especially nice and targeted for those who are extremely active. This is for those performance athletes that need that, that protein recovery post those extreme workouts. So really great option um, that you can purchase at your local grocery store. You don't have to go to a specialty store to get this. Um, so a really nice option for those who need it. Now, um, I'm going to kind of skip over this again, just a different flavor profile. Um, the nutritional is pretty much the same, but I wanted to spend some time talking about, because I'm sure as you're hearing these numbers, you might be like, well, Holly, how much protein do I actually need? I don't, I don't really know. And so what the recommendation is, is about 10 to 35% of your calories should come from protein. And so, for example, if you eat about 2,000 calories a day, you can see that would break down to about 200 to 700 calories coming from protein, which would then equal about 50 to 175 grams of protein per day. Now, that's a really big span difference of numbers, right? 50 grams of protein versus 175. So 
to break it down even a little bit more specific to you, we can look at your actual weight and then determine how much protein you would need based on that. Now, your protein needs vary based on a lot of different factors. So your age plays a role, your activity level. So this will change as we age. This is, will change as our activity levels change and so on. But just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a maybe honed in picture, um, so kind of at minimum for all of us, um, kind of the average person, average healthy person, we need about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram per day. That's the recommendation. Now that's kind of that minimum to prevent deficiency. As we age, so as we start getting into our 40s, 50s, and so on, we start to see a little bit more muscle loss. And that means we need a little bit more protein to help counteract that. So our needs increase as we get older, and we see that go up maybe 1 to 1.2 grams protein per kilogram per day. And then if you're super active, again, that makes a difference. Um, you're breaking down more muscle. You need more protein to help build that back up. So depending on your activity level, you might see that increase to 1.1 to 1.5 grams of protein kilogram per day. And certainly if you have questions about your specific um, situation, you know, you can always consult with a dietitian, nutrition professional um, to help you figure that out. But just wanted to give you again, that kind of broad average. So for example, if you we're like, well, I don't know how many kilograms I am because typically here in um, where we live, we typically look at pounds, right? So one pound is about 0.45 kilograms. And so if you're around 160 pounds, that's going to make you around 73 kilograms. And an easy way to figure out how many kilograms you are, um, just, I always like to just take a pound, you know, how many pounds you are. So, so if you're 200 pounds, you divide that by 2.2 and that'll give you an average amount of how many kilograms you are. So an average need for an active adult is going to be somewhere around 80 to 110 grams of protein per day for someone who's 160 pounds or 73 kilograms. So that gives you a little bit more of a honed in picture versus like this really big um, broad spectrum, you know, somewhere between 80 to 110 grams per day um, if you are at that weight and you are active. So again, factors will change that. And, um, you know, there's going to be a numbers more specific for you, but I just wanted to help put that in a little bit better of a picture. And so most Americans are not protein deficient. So most of us are not lacking in that, but what we tend not to do the best is spread out the protein in the right way. And so a lot of times people go a little bit lighter in the morning and throughout the day, and then they have a little bit more protein in the evening, say at dinner time. And so what we need to be better at is spreading that throughout the day, having protein at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then also in our snacks. So um, the nice thing about this is you can get almost 30 grams of protein. You know, if you think about getting 80 to 100 and 10 grams per day, you know, 30 per meal would get you around 90. And then you have your snacks to kind of fill in the rest. So somewhere between 20 to 30 grams of protein is kind of always what, you know, a good target is. But again, that will change up based on your daily needs. So again, making sure we have that good dose of protein in the morning and throughout the day is going to be really important. So I wanted to show you guys this too. So for most of us, if we're probably going to be picking up core power to try, we're probably just going to be taking it as a drink and, and drinking it. Uh, however, there's a lot of really fun things that you can do with core power if you wanted to get, um, you know, fancy and unique with it. These are available, recipes are available on their Instagram page. So you can just check out Core Power on Instagram, but everything from overnight oats to a protein coffee. So instead of using a creamer, you could put this in. Um, um, a lot of you know Joni um, on the dietitian team. And one of the things that she talks about, she loves to put chocolate milk in her coffee. So I think the chocolate Core Power would be so good in, in a cup of coffee. If you add um, milk to your coffee, I think that would be really delicious. You could use it as your milk instead of um, you know, with your cereal. So a lot of different things to do with it if you wanted to, you know, kind of try it in different ways. But I did want to make this tropical protein smoothie just to show you how easy it is to incorporate core power into 
some of the different recipes that you may be making already. Um, but before we, I stop sharing my screen and show you that, I wanted to show you the, the price points here. So I pulled this yesterday. Um, I, I believe it was the same this morning. So I always like to note price and availability do vary based on date and location. So I'm um, just keeping that in mind. But right now we see that core power is on sale. So traditionally it's 369. We're seeing the traditional core power on sale for 350. Um, and then the elite um, typically is $4.69, so we see a drop to $4. So um, that is the, the current price points. And again, you're going to find this kind of in that, that center aisle where you find some of those other performance drinks. So let me stop sharing my screen here and um, we can make a quick recipe and I will show you what the drinks look, up, look like up close. Um, I know we're a little bit over time, so if you do need to drop off, no worries. Um, like I said, I will send out a follow-up email afterwards with the YouTube link so that you can check it out afterwards if you have to drop for some reason. But I have here all three flavors, so strawberry banana, the vanilla, and then the chocolate. Honestly, they were all really good. Um, this tastes like strawberry milk. This tastes like a traditional chocolate milk and a vanilla milk, honestly. They all just had a really great flavor profile that you would expect, um, had a nice creaminess to them. Let me go ahead and pour, pour it in a cup here so you can kind of see what it looks like. This is the strawberry banana. And so you can see they're not using any coloring here. So even the strawberry banana, which maybe you would think, oh, it, it might be pink, it's not. Um, it's just your traditional milk color. and you can see it nice, nice and fluid here. It's not super thick. Like I said, it is creamy, but it's not super thick. So really has a nice um, drinkability to it and um, a nice sweetness to it as well. So like I mentioned, I don't feel like there's any of those sweeteners that stick out really um, boldly. I feel like they really work together nicely to provide the sweetness. But honestly, for me, when you, when you pour it out, and drink it, it really just tastes to me like you're drinking a flavored milk. So um, like you're drinking a chocolate milk, you're drinking a strawberry milk, drinking a vanilla flavored milk. And it is 14 ounces. So you can see here, this is a um, my mason jar here and it fills it almost to the top. I think this is 16 ounces. So it fills it to the top. It's a really good serving size. Um, of of your of your core power there in the 14 ounces. So um, I don't even know. I can probably even tell you which one I, I liked the best. I think all the flavors were, were really delicious. Um, if I had to pick one, I would say I probably really like the strawberry. Um, that's just my preference. I love strawberry milk. And so uh, I really love that. But they all had a really great flavor profile. Um, again, you know, because it is just milk, you didn't, you don't get that like grittiness that sometimes you get from um, like protein powder added performance drinks. So I really love that about it um, and had a nice sweetness. But again, not super bold in any of the sweeteners. I feel like it was a really nice balance. So um, you know, if you're interested in kind of having a little bit more protein, one question that I feel like I get sometimes about these types of drinks is like, is this a meal replacement? And I would say, no, this is not a meal replacement. This is not a lunch. Um, this is a post-workout drink. However, I think it can be part of a meal. So for me, this probably doesn't have enough calories or enough carbohydrates to be considered a full meal. But like I said, it can be definitely a part of a meal. So for me, like in the morning, sometimes it's really tough to sit down and have breakfast. So I think like for me, this would be really good to grab one of these, but I probably would add something to it. So maybe I have a little bit um, of peanut butter and a banana that would provide me with some good fiber and carbohydrates, some good unsaturated fats. And then this is where my protein is coming from primarily is from the drink. And then I get that good source of calcium as well. And so again, I probably wouldn't have it as this is my meal. This is not a meal replacement. This is a post-workout drink. Or like I said, it could be part of a meal depending on what your day looks like. So um, with that being said, uh, I just want to make you a quick recipe, only take probably about two minutes to make this, and this is where I feel like it could step in and be a great way to start your day. So we're going to make that tropical smoothie, so let me turn down my screen so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I have my blender, and what we're going to do is we're going to use 
some frozen pineapple and frozen mango. And you can switch up the fruit, it's only up to you. Again, this is a tropical smoothie, so that's why we're going for the mango and pineapple. But we're gonna do about a cup of each. So I have a cup of pineapple here. I love, personally, I love buying frozen mango. Uh, I, hate, I hate cutting mangoes. <laughs> they're just, there's easier ways to do it, right? But ultimately, it, they're, they're just hard. And you don't get a ton, like if you think about how much mango you get from a one mango, um, the frozen mango is just so cost effective because you get so much and it's already nice and cut for you. My girls, I have a three and a five year old, and they like to eat the frozen fruit, um, like as it is. So, like for a quick snack, they'll they'll snack on some frozen fruit. You can let it fall a little bit, but it just makes it really nice and quick and easy when they want that that quick quick snack. And then also we're gonna throw a banana in there. So you can see mine is nice and ripe here. So we'll throw in one banana. And I'll send you guys the recipe for this if we only want to call it a recipe. It's so simple. And then normally when I make smoothies, I, I love smoothies to start the day. Typically I'll add Greek yogurt to get the protein and then I'll add milk as well because you need that liquid in there to add that fluid to it. But today we're going to be using the core powder, which provides exactly what I would be normally adding, right? It's going to provide the, the protein and it's also going to provide the fluidity, right? It's going to have that liquid to it. So we're going to use the Core Power Vanilla, but depending what fruit you're using, if you wanted to change it up, you could absolutely use, you know, the chocolate or the strawberry, totally up to you. And I'm just going to use the whole 14 ounces. So I have my one bottle there. And then... That's it. So we're not adding anything else. Now, if you wanted to boost like the nutrition of it a little bit with some different nutrition, uh, let me put this on here. You can kind of see here, I have my, my ninja here in the back. Oh, here we go. Um, what I was gonna say, you could add like, seeds or flaxseed meal um, to get them to make it easier. So you could have that and just I think I got it blended, blended nice enough for us to open this up and take a look. Hopefully that didn't hurt your ears too much. All right. Let me go ahead and pour this in a cup for you guys. You can kind of see here. You can see it's nice and creamy and foamy, like what you would get when you put milk in. It's so good. It's really delicious. With those strong fruits like banana and pineapple and mango, the flavor just comes through so good. But it's super easy. Couple fruits, throw in a core power, and then you have this really nice smoothie. And this is probably a third of it. There's still a ton left in here. So definitely something you can spread across the family too as a quickie, qu quick, easy and go breakfast or snack and, and kind of you're out the door. So I will send you guys the recipe for this. Again, totally customizable. You can kind of make it what you want. But um, thank you so much for joining us today for Feature Friday. Uh, always lovely to be with you. I know we are a little bit over time. So I'm going to take a look through chat and I'll send up any follow-up questions uh, in the email afterwards if I missed anything. Um, so. And I, I see the question or I see the comment about, oh, wow, it's quiet. 
the the blender. I'm sorry if that, if that hurt your ears. Um, it was certainly not. So, but I will send along the recipe um, in the follow up email and some other important things. Um, and like I said, I'll take a look and see if there was any questions that I missed, and then I will send those to you as well. But I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. Um, as I said earlier today, just we appreciate you all so much joining our classes. And um, if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. But I hope to see you guys soon. Like I mentioned, I'll be kind of popping in here and there um, next year um, once I get back from from my um, my time off. But I really appreciate you guys and um, hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday. All right. Take care, everyone.